The Studio Editor is fully responsive, meaning that as your page and screen sizes change, your elements change in size, layout, and position automatically. Your elements grow, shrink, and wrap fluidly within each breakpoint, and their designs can change entirely in each breakpoint. In this lesson, we'll go a little deeper into breakpoints and cover how to control your breakpoints manually so you can get the specific results that you want, even when working with the responsive AI tool later on. Not all desktop, tablet, and mobile screens are the same size. So instead of editing for thousands of unique screen sizes, we edit for ranges of screen sizes. The default breakpoints on Wix Studio are 1,001 pixels and up for desktop, 751 to 1,000 for tablet, and 320 to 750 for mobile. And a breakpoint is the point where we jump up from one screen range into another. You can check how your design will behave on different screen and browser window sizes within the same breakpoint using the resize handles in the Studio Editor. And once you let go, they'll snap back to the default canvas size. The default canvas size for desktop is 1,280 pixels. But you can change your default size per breakpoint by typing a new value here on any of your breakpoints and then confirming. This can be especially useful if you're copying your design from another tool and it has a different size. You can adjust the default canvas size to make it match. Changing this default canvas size will apply to every page of your site at that breakpoint but any changes you make within your breakpoints on the page will only be applied to that page, not your whole site. Then, to see your site and other screen sizes within a breakpoint, just use the handles, or in preview, resize the handles to see the site move through every breakpoint. Next up, let's talk CSS properties. Things like the colors, sizes, position, and borders on your elements. When you make changes to your CSS properties on a higher breakpoint, that change is automatically reflected in any lower breakpoints, but not the other way around. This is called the cascading rule. So, if you change the CTA button's color in the desktop breakpoint, then switch to mobile or tablet, that change will cascade down. There is a caveat to this, called an override. So if you switch to the tablet breakpoint and edit that button again, it'll cascade down to the mobile breakpoint but the desktop will stay the same. In the same way, if we make a change on mobile, it won't affect the other breakpoints. If you were to make changes in lower breakpoints, they'll persist even when you change that property on a higher breakpoint. So say you go back to desktop now and edit that button again. Because you already changed that in a lower breakpoint, that last change won't be shown on mobile. And to reconnect a lower breakpoint to the next breakpoint up, you just need to right-click the element with the property you want to reconnect and choose Remove Overrides. If you want the design in desktop to be used in all breakpoints again, you can reconnect them all by right-clicking and choosing Use on all breakpoints. You can create overrides for any CSS properties, including size, color docking, and positioning, but not for structural or HTML content, like pinning an element, changing an image, or reparenting an element. So for example, if we move to the mobile breakpoint, you'll see this button is attached to a stack. If you move it outside the stack and attach it to another element or section, you'll see this tip pop up. Reparenting an element affects the HTML structure of your site, so it's a cross breakpoint change that'll affect every breakpoint. Let's try it out and change some of these properties on each breakpoint. There are a bunch of cross breakpoint actions you can take on elements that'll automatically affect every breakpoint. This is because they affect the HTML structure of your site. Most of these changes will be reflected in the Layers panel, but some will be directly related to the content on your page. They include deleting, stacking and unstacking, editing text, placing in a container, reparenting, changing a link, changing and resetting images, shapes, videos, and other media, adding a video box, anchoring, and pinning. You don't need to memorize this list, but it's good to know how they all work with the cascading rule. Take these three images, for example. They're taking up a lot of real estate, but if you remove and replace them with a new image, just for mobile, it'll also delete them on higher breakpoints. 
That's because deleting an element creates a structural change to your site. You can get past this by setting the item to hide, which will hide the element in that specific breakpoint and anything lower than it. You can see in the Layers panel that the image still exists, but it has this icon letting you know it'll be hidden. Then if you move to a larger breakpoint, that image is still visible. You can also add new images that only appear on your smaller breakpoints as well. This is a change to the HTML structure of your site. So if you go back to a higher breakpoint, you'll see it's been added to the HTML, but it's set to hide. So when you add an element to a lower breakpoint, it'll automatically be set to hide in the higher breakpoints too. So now you know how to work between different breakpoints, including how different changes affect each breakpoint. In our next lesson, we'll talk about how responsive AI can help you adjust your design for every screen size. See you there.